Hello and welcome on DDS, the R programming channel. Today we will see if we can accelerate R by using Python. This video is a follow-up on some previous video we did where we were looking at how we could speed R. And so we found that by using linear algebra or deep line R or data table, we could make R as fast as almost 20,000 times faster. Then we also made a video where we looked at whether we could accelerate R by calling Julia. And now in this video this week, we are going to ask whether we can accelerate R by calling Python. Python is not as fast as Julia, or at least it's not known to be as fast as Julia. And it's not known to be that much faster than R. But as we see, we have seen in R, R can be faster if we call the right library. So the question is basically going to be, does Python have some libraries that are very, very efficient and even more efficient than the libraries in R? And do we gain something by calling those libraries in R? For those of you that didn't watch the previous videos, I will make a very quick recap on what is the goal. For this tutorial, we are generating the data set randomly in R. And we are doing this here uh, by sampling some numbers between 0 and 199, uh, 2,400 times. And then we're doing something very similar for the movie IDs. But in this case, we're sampling from a normal distribution with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 50. And you see here the third uh, column is value and the value is just equal to 1. Don't worry about it for now. We will see later what it is used for. The goal is to go from a data frame of viewers and movies to a data frame of viewers to viewers and where we counted the number of movies they have watched in common. For more detail on how we make this data set and on the basic algorithms that we will explore today, you can go watch uh, the R speedup tutorial right here. The first thing to do when we want to call Python from R is to load the package reticulate. Once we load the package reticulate, we can use the function usePython to tell where is the Python in our computer. I like to do that instead of relying on the standard setup because this way I make sure that I know which Python is called uh, in my program. Then to bring the data frame from R to Python, we just have to use the uh, function R2Py. So the first version that we will implement now in Python and that we have implemented in R, it was a version where we were just doing a double for loop. And for loops are slow in R. And now the question is, are for loops slow in Python too? And we have seen that in Julia, it was very, very fast. And in this case, we're doing no algorithmic optimization. And so just a double for loop and we're even growing a vector, which is a bad practice. And we do that to kind of set the table and see what is the worst or the slowest thing we could do. But it's not also a fake example in the way that it is the worst and it, it is the slowest, but it is one of the easiest to conceptually understand and come up with and code. In our studio, you can uh, open a Python file and you will have uh, some Python syntax highlighting. And so it will be make it easier to work with Python in R or in our studio. And so we will go ahead and launch that uh, Python file. And then we will copy our R function and transform it slowly to a Python function so that you don't need, let's say that it was going to go faster with this uh, Python function. Uh, I'm taking you step by step on how you could transform your R, R code to Python code. And so you wouldn't need to be an expert in Python to be able to uh, make this, this uh, transformation. So the first thing we can do is change the way that we define the function in Python. Instead of saving the function into a variable, we use the, the def keyword and then we put a column at the end. So in Python, you don't use the arrow for assignments. And so we change that for an equal sign. Libraries in Python are, are the equivalent of packages. And pandas library is, uh, is the library that is used to bring all the data frame functionalities to Python. In Python, when we want to create a data frame, instead of data point frame, we write data frame uh, with capital letters at data and frame. And we have to say from which library are, uh, we take that function. And it's from the library Panda that we have abbreviated as PD. And so it's PD point data frames. And then if we want to make an empty data frame, we only need to say that we want our column to be equal. And then we give an array of names of that uh, of the columns in that data frame and then we just don't assign anything to those and that will make an empty data frame with those two columns okay so now we will transform uh, the for loops and the if statements from r to python and one thing that is very different in python from r it's that it is uh, sensitive to indentation and that means that the number of space we put uh, in front of the first line of code that we are going to, going to type is going to be important for python to know uh, what we want to run in our code and so in this case for the for loop when we put the column in the end instead of the curly bracket, we are telling it to start the for loop. But the way to say that we want to stop the for loop, it would be by not by closing uh, brackets, but it would be by just writing some code uh, aligned with the for loops. And so because we are aligned with the for loops, that will tell Python, well, this code is not part of the for loop. But as long as we keep the indentation uh, the same, so two space, 
we are synced to Python, what is written here is member or is part of this for loop. And so this is why here I'm removing the curly bracket and removing the other one, but I'm keeping my indentation. And in R, I am usually coding with some indentation just because it's easier to see and understand what is going on. And so in this case, I just have to remove my closing curly brackets and change my opening curly brackets with a column. And by the way, this was the same, uh, the same syntax is used when you define a function. And so we started with our indentation here and then nothing uh, in the end. Now, another difference for the for loop is that you don't need the parentheses. And so we can remove the surrounding parentheses and that will make it still work in Python. The same thing apply for the if statements. Another important transformation that we have to do is that we have to change all the places where we use something like a one column and then a number to get a sequence of number. Well, in Python, they don't have that. And so you have to call the function range. This function takes two arguments, start and stop. And so we say that we want to start the range at zero and stop the range at the number of row we have minus one. To get the number of row, we do df point shape and then we index it by zero. And so we get the number of columns. Range can take also a third argument, but in this case, we're not using it. And now we are doing the same for the second for loop. Sometimes Python can be a bit different than R in the way you use it. And so one of the reasons for that is that Python uh, developers are using the uh, object-oriented programming paradigm uh, more often than in R. It's the case for the pandas library. And so our data frame, df, it's an object with some method within it. And that means that we can call those methods by telling, uh, by using the name of our object. And so in this case, we called it uh, df and by uh, using a dot and then calling a method. And so in this case, the method is iloc. And the methods iloc let us uh, search for something in a data frame by uh, its index. And if we are using iloc, that means that we have to use numbers or indexes. And so we use the index i for the row and the index, uh, which will be just a number. So one to get the second column. We will do the same for just the other side of the equal sign. And that's it for the if statement. Now, to fill up a data frame with certain values, we will use the dictionary syntax in Python. And so we will use the same strategy as above with PD point data frame. Now we just do the same thing with viewer two. Finally, to grow a data frame, we only need to call this empty data frame that we want to grow and then use the method append. And to return in Python, we don't need the parentheses. The only thing left to do now is to bring all of our code into our R script and surround in surround it by pi run string and we also have to uh, escape our double quotes because now we give all that code as a string and so let's just change our double quotes for a single quote we're now all set to compare both the r and the python version when i do a quick comparison of timing i like to do it with the function tiktok from the package tiktok and so when you use uh, python reticulate you can call pi with a dollar sign and then you can access the functions and the thing you have defined in python and we also want to time the r version and so that's it let's run that code and see how long it takes so the results are out and it turns out that you won't gain any speed by going to python for this particular implementation and so as you can see here, the R version took 73.7 seconds and the Python version took 73.7 seconds. And so they are very, very equal. Python is not faster than R when you're doing uh, the very basic intuitive uh, way to code this algorithm. But as we have seen in the R tutorial and in the R and Julia comparison, sometimes some languages will uh, perform much better for one approach or another. And so the next version is the one where we just pre-allocate our data frame and so we don't grow the data frame in memory. This uh, in R from the last tutorial was giving us maybe, uh, it was saving maybe 10 seconds. And so we will see if Python is more or less affected by growing a vector. This is the R version and the only difference is that uh, in this case, we pre-allocate our data frame with a vector where we kind of make it bigger than what we need and we estimate that our data is going to fit into that data frame. And so let's do the same process and let's bring this code into uh, the Python file and let's transform it. To do this, we will use the same uh, dictionary strategy as we used before. We will just fill this up with zeros and we will make this data frame 20 times bigger than our input data frame simply by multiplying by 20 and then multiplying by the length of our uh, input data frame. And then we will do the same for viewer two. Now we can remove the uh, assignment of the temporary viewers data frame because we will uh, just assign our values to the data frame viewer coupling. And we'll do that using the iloc 
method. And then we will do that again for the second column. The last thing that we have to do is that we have to cut our data frame uh, so that we keep only the rows that we actually need in the end. And that's it for this function. Now we'll bring it into our R script and wrap this up into the function pyrun string. And this time, instead of using TikTok for the comparison, we'll use R benchmark. This is easier when we want to talk about relative differences and when we are starting to benchmark several functions. Uh, those functions are quite slow, and so I will bring the replications down to three. And so we can run that. And right away, we can see that the fastest version so far is the second version, uh, and it's in Python. We know from the R version of this tutorial that these are very slow way to compute what we want to compute. The third version we used is one where we try to vectorize the computations. And the way we went about it, it was by uh, making a, a list. And so this is the code we used previously. And the kind of the, the tricks here was that we first ordered our data set by viewer ID, and then we split our data frame by movie IDs. And so we make several little data frames. And then we go through each of those chunks of the data frames, and uh, we put the two viewer IDs together as the name in a list, and each time we see that pair, we increase the counter. And so this was quite a fast version in Julia. It was an okay version in R, but not as fast. And now let's implement that into Python. In this case, I'll just show you very quickly how we can translate our Python code to the R version, and then we'll talk about the benchmarks. First thing we have to do is bring the combinations from function from the library itertools. Now here, uh, we won't need to paste the characters like we did in R because Python in the dictionaries, we can give it a tuple. And so we don't have to join our strings together. We can just put the first string at the first place of the tuple and then the second string at the second place. And that will also um, let us avoid the splitting of the string later on. So now we can query the dictionary with that tuple. And we can use something called list comprehension in Python. And this helps us uh, put everything from a dictionary into an array, and that can be then uh, kind of the equivalent of uh, the vector we're giving to the data frame. Now, let's uh, get it and bring it into our R script and run it into a pyrun string function and evaluate its performance. So let's run that and see the results. So, as we can see, it took only 1.9 seconds uh, for the Python version and 3.9 seconds for the R version. So this is 20 to 30 times faster uh, than the previous algorithm. And so in both cases, in R and Python, the for loop is not efficient. You're better to use a dictionary structure or the, uh, something like a dictionary structure. And that is going to go much faster. Python is a little bit faster than R, but not by much, uh, twice as fast. I wouldn't say that in most cases it is worth it to go call some Python uh, to implement, let's say, this algorithm to make R faster, because you introduce so many uh, complexities by doing that to be worth it to go uh, use it to accelerate your R. Let's get going and implement the linear algebra version of this algorithm. And as I was explaining in the speed up tutorial, uh, most of this uh, function or algorithm is about transforming the data frame into a matrix, and then we're doing a matrix multiplication, and then retransforming it back into a data frame. Now we are going to focus on whether NumPy is faster for linear algebra or base R. Uh, we have to import the NumPy library in this case. The rest of the transformation are almost exclusively going to be uh, syntactic. So that should be it for the transformation. We will now bring this into our R scrim and calculate the benchmark. And this one is supposed to be uh, much faster, so we will do 100 replications. Let's run that and see which is the fastest. And the fastest is R, but not by much. Uh, but one lesson we can learn here is that for linear algebra, R and NumPy are quite equivalent. We can see here that NumPy was a bit slower, but only by a factor of 1.1. Uh, one interesting thing, though, about the NumPy library is that it will run in parallel uh, automatically. You won't need to parallelize your code yourself, and R does not do that. Those algorithms are a lot faster than the dictionary version. Uh, remember the uh, version with the dictionaries were taking, uh, on average, two seconds, two to four seconds. And in this case, we are not even uh, not even a fifth of the second. And so the linear algebra algorithm for this purpose is much faster. Now, the last uh, comparison is the one between 
uh, DeepLyR or Data Table and Pandas. When you are working with tabular data in R, often you will find Data Table and DeepLyR very useful. If you're working in Python, you will do that with Pandas. And those tabular data manipulation are usually equivalent to what you will be doing on a SQL database. Let's get going and compare Pandas to DeepLyR and Data Table. And so we have that here. This is the code for DeepLyR and this is the code for data table. We're making sure to set it uh, to use only one thread. So we don't want to compare uh, one algorithm that is using several cores and one that is not. These are the ways that we uh, would code that in R. And now in Pandas, uh, we would call it, code it in the following way. And let's just add an index here. And so it's a fairer comparison because we uh, gave the index to the data table package and uh, DeepLyR does not have this uh, option. Okay, that's it for the translation of the R code to the pandas Python code. Now we will bring it into our script and calculate the benchmark. Let's run that and see which is fastest. And data table. Data table is the fastest of the three, followed by DeepLyR and then pandas. Pandas is almost three times or maybe more, more than three times slower than data table or let's say pretty much twice as slow as uh, DeepLyR. And so here you go. If you're an R user, you don't need to go call some Python to make your code faster. You just have to uh, recode it in the proper way or in a, like a faster way, maybe with vectorized function or with a package that is optimized for your use case. And another benchmark we could do is compare the um, R version and the linear algebra version. And so as you can see in this particular case, data table was the fastest and the linear algebra approach were uh, quite a bit slower. They were like five times slower than all of the table uh, or tabular approach. We ran other examples where uh, the same number of samples, but another randomly generated data set made it so that the linear algebra approach in R was fastest. And in this case, it would have been that Python and R were uh, as fast. Sometimes the speed of the best algorithm would really depend on the data set that you have. That's it, folks. In the next tutorial, we will compare uh, DeepLyR and Data Table to SQL. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Pound, pound, pound.